In this video, we're going to talk about using TypeScript in Next.js 13. We're going to look at the benefits of using TypeScript. We're going to learn how to add it to a new project or to an existing project. We're going to talk about the TypeScript plugin that was introduced in Next.js 13.1 and more. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Hamid. I'm a full stack web developer and here on this channel, we mainly talk about modern web dev topics like React and Next.js. So let's go. Now Next.js comes built in with TypeScript support. It automatically installs all the necessary packages and modifies your TS config with proper settings. Uh, there's also a TypeScript plugin from the Next.js team that was introduced in uh, Next.js 13.1 uh, that makes the type checking more advanced and uh, adds some auto completion. This is for your code editor, in this case, VS Code I'm using. Uh, we're going to look at that together too, but for now, let's just start by adding TypeScript to a brand new project. You could start by running pnpx create next app with the latest flag. You can also run npx if you prefer the npm package manager. And after it, you can pass the name of uh, the project you want to create. In this case, I've already gone ahead and created this folder next ts so i'm going to pass in a dot representing the current working directory now this create next app with the latest flag is going to ask you for some options that you wish to set up your project and the first one is whether or not you want to use typescript so i'm going to say yes eslint yes tailwind css yes no to source directory app router is the recommended way to build Next.js 13 apps since the 13.4 version that marked stability for the app router. So I'm going to use the app router and I'm going to use import aliases. We're going to talk about import aliases in our TS config uh, as part of uh, our review, but for now just have it at the face value. We're going to talk about that later on. Okay, our dependencies are now installed. Let me just clear this out and make this a bit smaller. Let's just jump into our project and see what's going on here. So as you can see here inside of our app folder, we have the layout.tsx and page.tsx. These are going to represent the outermost root layout with this root layout and our, the home page of our application. Now, as you can see here, this is slightly different with the JavaScript version. And the only difference is just this React node passed as the type to these children. The children are going to be our page components, React server components, or client components that are going to be plugged into this root layout. Now, if you're not familiar with how Next.js 13 structure is, I have videos on the channel that I dive deeper into the new paradigm and concepts of building apps or React apps with Next.js 13 and App Router and React server components. I'm going to link it somewhere in the description here. But for now, we're just focusing on the TypeScript version of this application. Now on the page, as you can see, there's literally no difference between the JavaScript version or the TypeScript version. Nevertheless, if we come back to our project, we can see this tsconfig.json has been created for us. Before we look at the tsconfig, let me just explain this dependencies that were automatically installed for us. So as you can see, TypeScript is installed this type node react and react dom was also part of that config selection it has been installed for us now this ts config is another thing that was created for us uh, with the script we ran these are the preferred settings that's automatically set for us now the two things you can uh, actually set over here in your ts config which is also supported in uh, next.js is this path aliases you can just point anything that comes inside your project to these add signs. So if you have seen when you're importing, let's say, components or modules from different files, you would go dot dot and then forward slash dot dot forward slash to get come out and then to get to that folder that you want to go. With these aliases, you can just point, let's say, at components, and then it's going to uh, go to that specific uh, folder. So for example, if I want to say here that if I say at components, where I want to go is inside of my app folder. 
because the convention is to create the components folder inside of the app directory. And the reason why is anything inside of your app folder would be a React server component. So you would want to create your components inside. And this is going to map uh, components inside of your app to this alias. So you don't have to go dot dot forward slash dot dot forward slash. You just go add components and then the name of the components. If you have seen uh, the videos on the channel, you might have already seen this, but this is something you can do inside your tsconfig. The other option that you can pass in here and is supported uh, in Next.js is base URL. Uh, you can provide uh, your base URL over here or change it if it is using a different base URL. So that's all you need to do to start a new Next.js 13 app using TypeScript. Now let's talk about converting an existing project to TypeScript. The first thing you would want to do is to go to your app and turn uh, your files from JS to TS or from JSX to TSX. Once you did that, you can go ahead and run next dev and next build. These are going to automatically install the required dependencies, uh, sim similar dependencies as we've seen over here. So all you need to do is to run your scripts dev and build. This is going to install the dependencies and then you'd have to add this tsconfig.json file and maybe just uh, import or copy these proper settings from a brand new project or just include yours if you have a, a different preference over here and you're good to go with this conversion from a JavaScript project to a TypeScript project. Okay, next let's talk about the TypeScript plugin for your code editor. Now this was added in Next.js 13.1, if I am not mistaken, and it adds auto completion and advanced type checking to your Next.js 13 app. Now the way it works is once you have a TypeScript file open for the first time when you're running pmpm run dev, a pop-up will show up in your editor, allowing you to select if you wanna use that specific version of TypeScript. Uh, mine isn't showing because I missed that. If you have missed it too, that's okay. You can just open up your command prompt or command palette by hitting Control Shift P or Command Shift P in Mac, and then type in TypeScript over here, and then come down to this Select TypeScript version. Here you can see two different versions or two different choices. One is the VS Code's version, and the other one is the Workspace version. We're going to select that, which is going to add this VS Code settings over here for us, so it makes things easier. This is going to give us that advanced type checking that's specific to Next.js, React Server Components, and the newly added features over here. Now, let me show you some of its options. If I open up the page, um, one of the options you can export from your page is your route segment config options. Now again, if you don't know what these are, I have a video on the channel where I talk about data fetching in Next.js 13 and explain these route segment config options and compare them with the way we used to do data fetching in Next.js 12. I'll link that video in the card so you can uh, get to understand these better. But for now, uh, what we're interested in here is the advanced type checking that was added for us using this TypeScript plugin. As you can see here, I have all the uh, possible options or values for this dynamic uh, variable or dynamic config option. Now, another feature that this TypeScript plugin adds to our Next.js app is specific to React Server Components. So right now, this page, because it lives inside of the app folder, it's by default a React Server Component. And if I try to import, for example, a React hook over here by saying import use state from React, as you can see here, it is telling me that user state is not allowed in a server component. Now, if you want to use a React hook, you have to turn your component into a client component by passing this use client directive. This is the convention in Next.js 13. Now with that, the type error is now gone. We can use the user state here inside of our component because now this is a client side component. Now another cool thing is that if you misplace this use client, it is going to again give you an error because this use client directive is meant to be at the top of your file. Here you have two errors because this is not used at the top of the module or the top of the file. 
and also this import now is happening before this directive therefore this user state is still inside of a server component so you're getting two errors now another cool feature that is going to be added to this typescript plugin in future is when you wanted to pass data from server to the client now anytime you wanted to pass data from your server to the client for example if you're passing a prop down from your server components to your client components that data needs to be convertible to a string it, it should be a serializable data now right now the plugin doesn't have this feature so if you try to do so your application would fail because it tries to for example convert a date to a string it can't and then it fails but with that plugin anytime that you're crossing the boundary between the server and the client anytime your data is traveling to the browser it checks and see if they are safe for the browser and if not it's going to give you a type error now, another TypeScript feature in Next.js 13 is typed links. Next.js can statically type your links to prevent errors when you're trying to navigate between different pages using the next link. To use it, you have to opt in inside of your next config.js. You have to pass in this experimental flag. And inside of it, you have to pass in the typed routes true option which is going to enable this static type checking for your links. If we go back, let me just rerun the dev server over here. Now, if I go to my layout over here and let's say inside of this body tag, what I want to do is to render a header and then I'm going to render a main tag uh, and then I'm going to just put this children which is our page components inside of this main tag. So I've just added that header. Inside of this header, let's just add a nav and then a UL and then LI. Inside of it, I'm going to use a Next.js link. And here, I'm going to pass in an href. Let's try to pass in an href to an about page that doesn't even exist. So as you can see over here, let me just close this off. Now, as you can see, this is giving me an error because we currently don't have an about page. Let me just go ahead and create an about folder. Inside of it, I'm going to create a page.tsx, which is responsible for rendering this page. So let me just put in the about page over here. And now if I go back to my layout, that error, as you can see, is gone because now I do have an about page. Now, another cool feature is that if I misspell this route over here it also is going to give me an error because we don't have that specific route this is going to actually look at all the possible routes inside of our next.js application create a type definition for all the hrefs we can use in the next link component and decides whether or not this is a correct path now with React Server Components in Next.js 13, you can fetch your data inside of your component. This means that you can type the response of that fetch the same way that you type any other response and then use it right inside of your React component. This is very different with the way that we used to do it in Next.js 12, where if you were fetching data on your server, for example, your get server side props or your, your get static props, you would have had to type those responses or the data that's going from your server to the client in a specific type. Let me just show you what I mean. So if I go back to the pages uh, router inside of the documentation and let's say we go to get server side props, as you can see, we have this get server side props type from Next.js, which is a specific type uh, mapping to the boundary between the server and the client. So with React Server Components, we no longer need a specific type. Plus that it doesn't need to be converted to a string. It doesn't need to be serializable because it is staying on the server. Now for complete end-to-end -end type safety, your database or CMS, your content provider, also needs to support TypeScript. Or you can use an ORM like Prisma, which is basically a typed, a fully typed client for your database. So therefore, when you're fetching data inside your React server components, it's fully typed. When you're sending it to your client-side component, it is also typed. The same way you're typing any other prop 
when you're sending data from the server to the client. And with the feature that I mentioned is going to be added to the TypeScript plugin in future. If this data you're passing in from your server to the client contains any type that is not convertible to string, you're going to get an error for it. Now, two more things to mention here. Your uh, next config.js is a JavaScript file because it is not going to be parsed by your compilers. It needs to remain a JavaScript file. To add some type to it, you could use JS docs and add this comment up top. This is going to be added automatically if you're creating a brand new project and select a TypeScript option. It is going to be added here. If you have manually added this yourself, you can just add this uh, JS doc comment up top to get some type checking inside of your next config.js. Now, if for whatever reason you wanted to ignore a type error when you're building your application, and typically you shouldn't be doing it because that kind of defeats the purpose of using TypeScript, but if there is a type uh, or error that you cannot figure out and you want to just skip the type error, uh, erroring out or failing your build, you can pass in a an option to your next config.js which is inside of your TypeScript uh, object, you can pass in to say ignore build errors true. Now this is going to ignore any TypeScript error during your build process, uh, which it shouldn't, but if for whatever reason you need to do this, you can just pass in this ignore build error flag to your next config.js to ignore the error. That's a wrap for this video, folks. We have talked about adding TypeScript to a brand new project, also to an existing project. We talked about the benefits of using TypeScript in Next.js 13. We showed the TypeScript plugin that's for your code editor that adds this type checking or advanced type checking or extra type checking needed for Next.js 13 and React server components and the features that we'll see in the future. We talked about how close we have gotten to end-to-end -end type safety with this new paradigm in Next.js 13 using React server components that allows us to fetch data inside of our React components and all on the server. So less data is going to cross the boundary from the server to the client. Less data needs to be serialized. And when it does need to be serialized, it is still typed using a typed client for our database or our CMSs that support TypeScript. Now, TypeScript support for some of the newly added React features like React Server Components is not fully there yet as of now. If you had any questions, hit me up in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.